I get asked two questions quite a bit. First, how do you get so much done every day, Abby? And second, how do you seem so happy all the time? Well, the answer to both questions is actually the same, and I believe I owe it all to my morning routine. So today I'm gonna to take you through my easy to adopt five-step morning routine, which will only take you 15 minutes but you will absolutely get huge results. So stay tuned. Well, hi, we're back again. We're together again. I love when we're together. If you're watching me on YouTube, hello, please subscribe. Please maybe leave a comment saying how much you love it. Um, <laughs> and anywhere else, if you're just listening, sitting back in your, I like to picture where you are all the time. I'm thinking, where are folks listening? If you wanna write in and tell me where you're listening, I'd love to hear. <laughs> are you in the car? Are you cleaning the house? Are you at work when you're supposed to be doing something else? I would love to know. Do you listen to it all together? Do you break it up? I'd love to hear. Let me know. Give me some, give me some love. Write in, say hi. Glad you're here. So I, you know, I've wrestled with this topic for a while and presenting it because as you know, I, I like to do everything that like, here's what the research says. And then, you know, here's how I apply it to my own life. And then, you know, here's how it works for all my clients. And, and this definitely has lots of stuff from the research, but it is my own kind of way of put things together over the years. And, but, and it's something that I've given to clients over and over that has absolutely positively worked over and over and over. And uh, one of those things that they continually say, yes, this was the ticket. So, uh, so I want to teach you. I actually did a talk in Salt Lake City recently, a few weeks ago now, um, where I presented to a group about kind of how to thrive in 2022. And I, I listed some of this stuff, but this is really, you know, we're getting granular today. We're talking nitty gritty. When I say step-by-step -step guide, I'm taking you like minute by minute. That's how we're doing it. Because I think a lot of times things we're told to do things and then it's like, how do I, I don't know, for me, I'm thinking, how do I apply that to my own life? That's very nice for you, you know, Kit, but what do I do? <clears throat> so, excuse me, this is really how to make your mornings great and how to do it, again, in a very specific way exact kind of fashion and again so i'm gonna give, gonna give you these like five steps and you're gonna make it yours so that you can have great mornings and have that lead to great days you know in a consistent way and i also want to say that this works even if you have kids this is something i've been doing even when my kids were little they're teenagers now but even when they were really young it's something that I, it's actually when I instituted it when they were pretty young. So I will throw in a lot for the parents out there, but this is for everybody, but I'll also talk about some little modifications if you're a parent, okay? So hopefully I can get everyone on board today with creating a different sort of morning because it is, it's the fuel that fills your tank. It is what will create your mood stabilization, uh, what we call emotional regulation, good thinking, how to get productive, time management. It really all goes back to this. And that is from research. So, but definitely my own personal too. When uh, mornings are just that time. And I used to be a night owl. I've said this before. I was not, I tended bar for years and years. I was a night owl. I liked to stay up all night. I hated mornings. Uh, really up until, really until I had kids probably. Even then I hated mornings. But um, I, I train myself to become a morning person because I just found that that's how I was most productive in my life and how I felt best, frankly. So, and I think for some of us who are in recovery from anything or anybody who has had habits where, or had, have had habits at night that are bad, <laughs> that aren't good for you, like doing drugs or drinking too much or smoking too much pot or, uh, you know, sleeping, sleeping with people you shouldn't, you know, going out late for a booty call or whatever. Do they still call them booty calls? I'm too old. I haven't had a booty call in a long time. Um, but you know what I mean? Like whatever you're doing at night that you're just in a ha a negative habit or an unhealthy habit, it, it really helps to get to bed earlier because that, um, you're not up at night 
just trying not to do the bad thing. <laughs> you're just, you're not even up. So I will say that helps. And I, again, if you have kids or maybe you have parents living with you or who knows what your living situation, maybe you have 20 roommates, but I promise you that incorporating even a couple of these steps will have you feeling more in control and happier in your life. So I don't want you to there's really no excuses. I don't know what else to say. You can, I, again, if you live with 15 people, some of this stuff you're, you're going to have to think about how to do differently, but you can do it just like anything else. Okay. So let's get to it. Who, what are we waiting on, Abby? Step one. I'm going to swear today. <laughs> Step one is get the fuck to bed. Get to bed. There's a really great, um, little children's book, you know, you know, go the fuck to sleep or something. And I, that was, that was my inspiration for step one. You're okay. So, and I've said it before, I'll say it again. Your day doesn't start when you turn off your alarm in the morning. It starts when you set it at night. Yes. One of the biggest factors to having a great day is getting as good a night's sleep as you can. This means getting your ass to bed at a reasonable hour and not staying up all night, you know, binging something on Netflix. It means not staying up late answering emails or playing games on your phone or doing any of that. You got to go to bed. And I, I know what you're saying. I can hear you now. I can hear you. I'm in your house right now or in your car, wherever you are. <laughs> and especially if you have kids, here's what you're saying. I'm about to read your mind. I'm going to blow your mind right now because I'm going to read it. You're saying, but Abby, this is my only alone time. Late at night is the only time I get all day for me. And here's the deal. If you get, so first of all, if you do this in the morning, that'll be your morning me time. And it will be more effective and better and all the things than all of this um, nighttime time. Let me just say that right now. Okay. But more importantly, I want you to really hear this. If you get more and better sleep, you're going to feel more refreshed all day. You know this. If you've had a crappy night's sleep, do you wake up motivated? Do you wake up thinking, oh, I'm going to go work out or I'm going to go pray or meditate or I'm going to go eat healthy breakfast? No. You're thinking, oh my gosh, I need 20 cups of coffee. This day sucks. I can't stand it. I feel miserable. That's what you're doing. So getting good sleep and enough sleep is key. I did a whole uh, podcast episode on why sleep will change your relationships. I will link to it here in the show notes. But it is, uh, and again, you can search on the website for sleep. <laughs> It'll come up. But I do all about sleep hygiene in that. All about how, you know, from the research, what's the best ways to get sleep and why and all the good things. So, but you got to get as much sleep as you can. And I would say the minimum really is for any adult is seven hours and the maximum shouldn't be more than 10, but really maybe nine. Um, cause you know, you can get too much sleep and feel even more tired too. So, but you're going to be feeling better all day. And here's what's key. When you have good sleep, when you have more and better sleep, you have better emotional regulation. You have better critical thinking. This means you're more stable in your days. You're able to plan and execute better, which means you're better with time management, which means you're more productive. Hello to Abby's day, which results in you not feeling completely drained at the end of the day, right? In other words, you wouldn't need all that me time late if you got more and better sleep because your day would go better. You'd be thinking better. You'd be more on it. You wouldn't be reacting to things emotionally all the time. You would eat better. You would do a lot of things better. So go to sleep. <laughs> Get your butt into bed at a reasonable time and practice some good sleep hygiene. And you'll find yourself ready and happier when the morning comes. Okay? That's what I'm telling you. As part of getting to bed on time, I'd like you to do a couple of things early in the evening when you have more energy. So again, we're, we're planning for your good morning, but this is how I do it. This is how, and this is what I've asked other people to do, and this is what works. So first things first is get things ready that you'll need for the next day. So if you've got kids, I used to have the backpacks at the door, right? All packed up with their stuff at the door at night. I never, ever tried to do that in the morning. Are you kidding me? Oh my gosh. 
Uh, shoes. Shoes were always big. We could never find shoes in the morning. So I would get all that stuff packed the night before. Sports equipment, you know. Oh, gosh, the uniforms when they have had a game the next day. You know, the socks and the belt and the thing. Yeah, it was all packed the night before. And that is, and don't tell your kid to go pack their bag. I mean, you can, but they're going to miss stuff. So either have a list of what they have to check off or just check yourself at the end. You can have them put most of their stuff in there, you know, and and do it. But however you want to do that. But uh yeah, finding shoes in the morning. Oh, that I don't know what is up with the shoes. But and my own shoes too sometimes. Uh, if you're going, you know, and for yourself too, pack the night before. If you're going to go to the gym at lunch, pack that bag or get anything else ready that you need to bring to work in the morning. If you want to make sure you bring water to work in the morning, you know, put the jug out where you'll see it. I have a little counter space where my keys are right on the way out the door. I always put my keys there when I get home so I don't have to search for keys. They always go on the rack. But I also put things there that I want to remember to bring to work the next day. Um, And I have a little space below it for like a bag. So sometimes I have a bag down there with stuff in there that I'm going to bring to my office or whatever. And this is my place. I do that or it's not going to happen. It's just not. And I don't want to be running around in the morning trying to figure all that out. I want it done. Okay. The second trick I have to getting to bed on time is that when I get home from work, I... When I kind of walk in the door after my day, that's when I wash my face and take off all my makeup, unless we're going out at night. Um, But if we're not, most of the time we're staying in. But when I get home, you know, kind of a Monday through Sunday through Thursday thing, right? I take off all my makeup and, you know, because I have like a, you know, three-step routine for that. And I put on all my good lotions and exfoliators and I do the scrubs. I do all that stuff then. So like at, you know, five or six or whatever time that is before I start dinner, before I start with everybody else. And I'll tell you, it. first of all, it's a little me time that I sneak in there. And it's a wonderful time just to kind of decompress from the day, make sure I'm pointed in the right direction. Also, late at night, I'm too tired to take off my makeup correctly. I'm too tired to use all the stuff that someone said was such a good idea to do. If some of you can do that, God bless you. I can't. I suck. I suck at it. I I just won't do it. Uh, I'm just too tired later. So not only does it help me sort of transition from work to home and kind of get myself in that headspace, I'm also doing something wonderful myself and taking for myself and taking just a few minutes. And I'm doing something that otherwise, when I'm trying to do it right before I go to bed, it's like this rush to get into bed. It, it's just taking longer to get into bed. I'm suddenly, you know, my bedtime's around nine o'clock and suddenly I'm, it's 10 o'clock and I'm not in bed yet because I'm still doing all the things. So I really do work, work diligently on making sure that stuff is done before. And I have even brushed and flossed my teeth early, like right after dinner, even though I might have a little snack later, but I, and I, I, yeah, I'm out in myself. I'm out in myself. I've done this before and I have gone to bed without brushing my teeth again, but at least they got brushed a few times that day. You know, I brush my teeth in the middle of the day at the office and I brush them every morning and you know, it's not perfect, but it's better than nothing. And otherwise, if it's late, I'm not going to floss because I'm too tired. I'm too tired to floss. So it's the perfect time to floss. I guess not. But it's fine by me. It I get good checkups at the dentist. You know, something's working. Just it's a it's a great idea to really think of your night, uh, you know, the whole like rest of your day and not just hit the door running when you get home and just take a minute for yourself. And lastly, this is a very important part of step one. I want you to set your alarm for the next morning for 15 minutes earlier than you need to wake up. So I'm going to talk about this in step four, but we're going to use that 15 minutes in step four. But for now, <laughs> I want you just the night before, if you usually wake up at six, wake up at 545. Okay, so that's it. And step two is to wake the fuck up. I'm swearing again. Told you I was going to swear today. Step two is to get up. When the alarm goes off, it's time to wake up. End of. It's not time to hit the snooze. What time is it? It's not hot, not time, it's time to wake up. Not time to hit the snooze button. Do not ever, ever, ever again, 
ever in the history of yourself hit the friggin' snooze button again. You are right there completely screwing up your day when you do this. That is ruining your day probably more than anything else. For a few reasons, I've gone over these before. I'll go over them again because I'm coming for your snooze button. I'm coming for it. I'm coming for your snooze. You're right now, you want to shut me off. Right now, you don't want to listen to me anymore. And here I go with the facts. Don't you hate it when I have science to back up things you don't want to do? Snoozing, first of all, ruins. There's a behavioral conditioning that happens when the alarm goes off and, you know, you're supposed to get out of bed. When you hit the snooze button, it ruins that behavioral conditioning between the stimulus, which is your response, which is your alarm, sorry, and your response, which is getting your butt out of bed. So that's number one. So you're ruining that stimulus response thing, which is big. You want that. that that's something that can work for you in a really good way. When you hit the snooze, and here's the biggie, and start, you start to fall back asleep. So your body is gearing up for another full cycle of sleep. That's what's happening. So when that second alarm, it it jerks you awake during the beginning of your next sleep cycle. And that incomplete cycle leaves you with something called sleep inertia grogginess. And that lasts for hours after you get up. So it makes you feel more tired for longer than you would have been if you had just gotten your ass out of bed. I know. I It doesn't seem right. I'm sorry to break this to you. I used to be a snoozer. I hit the snooze button all the time for many years. But as soon as I heard the science, and it really does work, I, I this is one of those things clients come back over and over and go, oh my gosh, right away I felt better. Right away you'll feel better. Get out of bed. That sleep inertia grogginess, it creates lapses in your thinking and your planning and your judgment and it diminishes your emotional regulation so you're not you're not as efficient with your time management you don't prioritize as well I know you don't even if you got a decent night's sleep but if you hit the snooze in the morning you will not get all the benefits that you would have gotten from getting the decent night's sleep your emotional regulation is off, which means that you're probably overreacting to things or underreacting to things. You're going to be slower on the pickup or you're going to be too emotional on the pickup. It's, it's bad. <laughs> it's bad. And lastly, and to me, this is really the most important. This is your friggin' first commitment of the day and you're not keeping it. Nope. Not keeping your first commit. You made this commitment to yourself. I'm going to get up 15 minutes early. I'm going to go do this Abby thing. And you just, just don't do it. So your word means nothing to you. And that's going to translate into other areas of your life. Oh, I promised to eat healthy today. I don't need to keep to that. I don't keep promises to myself. I don't trust what I say. My word is crap. No, thank you. No, thank you. I don't want you thinking this way anymore. I know. Yeah, it's getting in there and it's not cool. It, it's, you know it because you don't feel good when you snooze over and over. It does, You feel like icky about yourself. You, you're you not keeping that commitment. So keep your commitment. And a little pro tip for getting up is to use a real alarm clock instead of your phone. And put that alarm clock away from your bed. So I have, I've talked about it before. I use the Zen alarm clock. It's sort of one of these little clocks that go, you know, um, starts low and then gets a little louder, um, you know. So what's happening, even if you're not waking up right away, the your brain is starting to wake up because it hears the noise. I have, another, I have a client who has the lights in his house hooked up through that Nest thing or Ring or one of those, I don't even know, or Google Home or whatever. He has it hooked up so that, the lights start to slowly come on. And again, that helps wake you up when the when the lights are on. Uh, so any of these little tricks, but putting your alarm clock, I did that for years because I used to turn off the snooze and not realize I was doing it. I used to hit the snooze and not realize I was doing it. Or I would even hit turn off my alarm clock and oversleep completely and not remember doing it. When you put your alarm across the room, you've got to get out of bed to do it. So I have one client who's so bad at this. She put the alarm in her, she has like an ensuite bathroom. She had to put it all the way in the bathroom because <laughs> she was, the other furniture was too close to the bed and she'd come back to bed. So just that's just a little pro tip, you know, get off your phone. Don't be looking at, because the other problem when you do use your alarm, your phone, your iPhone or, you know, 
Galaxy, whatever the hell you use, your smartphone as your alarm, is that when you go to turn it off, you have it in your hand and now you're starting to look at your phone. It's it's easier to look at your phone. So I'm an addict. You know, I always have to figure out ways to trick myself into not doing the things that are unhealthy. And that's one of my tricks is I leave that thing in the other room. Right now I'm here in my office. I don't even have it around. I have, if you come watch me on YouTube, I'm going to hold it up. I have an old, can you hear it? I have an old school kitchen timer. That's what I have. I've got a bunch of these and I keep them here on my desk at work. I keep one in my car for when I meditate. I have them at home. And I use old school kitchen timers instead of my regular phone, not for waking up in the morning, but for little tasks I'm doing or, you know, when I'm timing myself, when I'm reading for 10 minutes or if I'm doing something else. I use those so that I'm not tempted to look because it's hard. Those phones are hard. They're cracked. We're carrying around like heroin in our pockets. It's so hard. So make your life a little easier. There's a little pro tip. Get yourself a real alarm clock. And when you're running around and doing things around the house, and when I talk about this 15 minutes that we've been saving, really think about using an old school timer. Okay, let's get to step three. Step three, so the alarm has gone off. You turn it off right away. You've, you've gotten a good night's sleep, hopefully, or a better night's sleep than usual. Again, it takes sometimes a little time for your circadian rhythms to catch up, for your body to catch up to, you know, your crap sleep cycle into a good one, but just give it a little time. You, you'll, you'll get in there. Step, so now I've done those. Now step three is you want to think a good feeling thought right away. When we wake up in the morning, uh, we immediately, cortisol starts to get released. A, lo a lot of our old, um, you know, uh, caveman, so to speak, um, responses start taking over because, you know, when you woke up 100, 200,000 years ago, it's probably because something was about to kill you. You know, it's probably because you heard a noise or something happened and you woke up. Um, so it's built into our brain chemistry that when we wake up, we have sort of negative thoughts first, that we have these stress-inducing hormones and uh, neurotransmitters coming into our system. So you've really got to counteract that. And you do that by thinking a good feeling thought right away. I don't even get out of bed, okay, before I do what I'm going to tell you. So again, you're trying to point your head in the right, in a positive direction first thing. And because what do you, what usually happens? You wake up, what do most people do? They hit the alarm, they groan, oh, and their first thought, what's your first thought usually? That you didn't get enough. I didn't get enough sleep. I didn't get enough. I'm so tired. I can't wait to get back to bed. This is the crappiest way to start your day. You're already like behind you, you already don't have enough. Your day is already not enough and you've been up for three seconds. This is not good. So remember, you feel the way you think. So if I'm thinking all these thoughts that my day is not enough and I'm not enough and I wish I was in bed, then that's how I feel. We So if you're thinking you're already tired, you didn't get enough sleep and that your life sucks, you're, you're going to start your day feeling impatient, frustrated, resentful, hopeless. God knows what else. This is not a way to start. So instead, I want you to do two things before you get out of bed. And again, I do these. I, I lay in bed while I do this. But if you're worried about falling back asleep, you can sit up on the edge of the bed. Just don't get out of bed yet. So either lay down if you feel like you won't fall back asleep, like me. I'm, you know, I'm very used to getting up at a certain time now, so I can kind of do this. But uh, if you're not there, just sit up in bed. Put your feet on the floor. Uh, and I do two things, okay? And they take less than a minute. So please don't tell me you don't have enough time. And this, is, this can even be part of your 15 minutes early, this one minute if you want. First, you want to bring your mind to a good feeling thought. And you want to breathe that in. So you want to take a moment to focus your mind on something that makes you feel good. And you have to consciously do this. And I, in the beginning, when I was first doing this, I put a sticky on the alarm reminding me to do this. Okay. Or I put, I have this little bowl of um, seashells that, you know, we collect over at, on vacations. We're allowed to bring home, like everybody can bring home like one special shell, and instead of 20 shells or 100 shells and we've been filling them in this bowl and I have sometimes I'll take a shell out or something like that and I'll leave it on the alarm so when the alarm goes off I, I even have what my good feeling thought is going to be right I can I can bring my mind to oh I love the ocean 
I love laying in the water. I'm so, oh, I love those vacations with my kids or, you know, with Gary, whatever. I think about that thing for just a few seconds. You don't have to go there long, but you will feel better as you think about it. You can uh, lay there and think how good, sometimes I think about how good the sheets feel. I've got very expensive, like, you know, 1500 thread count sheets. And I will lay in those and just, oh, it feels so frigging good. Or like my really good flannel sheets when it's cold in the winter, you know, and just think of the yumminess of that. Or of Gary laying next to me, right? Uh, how good he feels. Some of us all tuck up behind him and because uh, I get up so early. I'll just sort of tuck up behind him and I'll bring myself to that, to him, you know, and how great grateful I feel for him, how much I love him. And I'll just be in that for a moment. So it's whatever you want. Like it could be a picture you have in the room that you want to look at and bring your thoughts, settle on that, how beautiful it is. Or maybe it's a picture of family or something else. Um, you can stretch and think about how much you appreciate your healthy, strong body. You know, choose any thought that will make you feel good, right? Because we feel the way we think. So any thought that will make you feel good. And then what I want you to do is you're going to take a conscious, slow, deep breath in and you're going to breathe in that good feel feeling thought. Just so you know how you breathe in a good smell? Something smells really good and you're like... <sighs> Mmm, smells so good. Same thing. I literally do it that way. I think of it almost like a smell, like it smells good. And maybe you could do that. Maybe if your partner gets up first and they make coffee and you can smell the coffee, or if you're lucky, someone's making bacon. How good does bacon smell when you get up? That's motivating. That'll get you out of bed. <laughs> bacon? I'm up. Uh, you know, whatever it is, but I like that. That's how I want you to think about it. Like you're breathing in really long and soft and slow and a long, slow exhale out. That's it. So that all took, I don't know, 20 seconds, maybe 30 if you're really slow about it. And then again, in the same thing, these are the two things you're doing. You're doing the breath in, focusing on something good, and then you're going to set an intention. You know, I love intention setting. I, I call it the 18 second shift because that's all it takes, an average of 18 seconds, and it completely changes everything. It, it, you get a shift. What I have found is there's generally, there's like a tone in the mornings and it centers around rushing and getting stuff done. Yep. And this focus on getting shit done is what creates frustration, uh, high expectations, anger. And I'd say the most damaging thing is it you end up with a lot of controlling behavior. Okay. So I know, yeah, there's things that need to happen in the mornings. I get it. I get it. There's lots going on. And again, I have kids now and I've had kids when they were little. It, it's a lot to do. But I want you to stop and take a minute and think about why you're doing all this. It, like, So if you have kids, for example, I want you to wonder, why are you so focused on getting all this stuff done? I got to do this, I got to do the lunches. I gotta do that, that. Deep down, it's because you love them. It's because you want everyone to get where they need to go with everything they need to get it done, right? You, that's why you're doing that. The problem is that this loving inspiration gets lost in the mornings and no one is feeling like you're being very loving. <laughs> um, or, or maybe you don't have kids. Maybe it's to get yourself out the door with, you know, a healthy lunch and everything you need for work that day and your, you know, your computer and whatever. Just slow down and think about having a more relaxed tone in the morning. Set an intention, right? So you're going to set an intention instead of this, um, I'm fixing my lipstick, sorry. Instead of this intention for, of, of this busyness of um, doing it, I got to do it and get this done, da, da, you know, slow it down. I, I'd say the number one intention I set for myself day to day is one of patience. I, I'm just not very patient, even with everything I've learned and everything I teach. That is my Achilles heel and something I consistently need to work on, which is fine. And that's what I do. So I set intention or for mindfulness or to be kind or playful. Imagine being playful in the morning. Who would have thought? I know. Whatever will keep you, you know, moving in the in a positive direction is what I want you to focus on. So instead of focusing on getting stuff done, I want you to set an intention of loving service. I do that a lot with my kids, you know. I'm thinking to myself, I want, because that's what I really want. I want them to have a healthy breakfast because I want them to have a good day. I want to make sure all their stuff is where they need it so that they have everything they need when they do sports and when they go to school and they have their homework. It's because I love them. And I 
and want to be of service to my kids, right? I want to be of service to Gary. I want to be of service and, and to myself, most importantly. So I want you to consciously tell yourself that you'll be loving or again, or patient or kind to yourself and your family members in the morning. That's how I want you to think. It's, it could be just self-compassion. That's plenty for me. I think that's great. Again, yes, there's things to do, but your actions and words will flow from your loving intention instead of a need to get stuff done. I get everything done in the mornings, but because I'm not like at people, the energy shifts. And you'll be more self-aware this way. You'll be more relaxed. You're more thoughtful instead of on that, you know, controlling autopilot where you always, you know, I remember my only agenda was checking off everything on my to-do list. (laughs) So again, you still get things done, but the tone, the feelings, and the mood completely shift. And I want to remind you that whenever you're in that state of getting it done, and this doesn't have to just be in the morning, this can be at any time, you're in a controlling mind frame, right? You know that. When the (laughs) people, and here's what's hard, when the people around you feel like you're trying to control them, they react. They don't like it. They act out. They act passive aggressively or or just aggressively. They get defensive. They ignore you or all kinds of other behaviors you don't like. Okay. And I can even remember in my crazy controlling mom days back in the day when my kids were really little, there were plenty of times uh, they would exert their control because I was being so controlling and rushing them. And so, yeah, I had to call the school and say, yes, we will be late today because McCartney needed to zip her own jacket. Have you ever seen a little kid zip their coat? (laughs) It's so painful. (laughs) It's so painful. (laughs) And oh, and they'll just keep trying and trying. And you're, and now I got it. I can do it. And it's when we get really controlling about other things. If we're less controlling in other ways, our kids don't use that way necessarily to act out, to, to, you know, exert their control because they feel control in a lot of other ways. And you'll be able to zip their jacket. So... (laughs) And this is true for everybody. You know, adults do it too. They act passive aggressively when we act controlling. And again, it's usually something that's going to make you crazy. So instead, slow down and be aware of your intentions and set an intention. And when you do this before you even get out of bed, you are setting the tone for the intention that you're about to bring into your morning. And it's wonderful. It is really good stuff and it will stay with you. I do all kinds of stuff on setting intention. I'll, you know, link to the videos and all that, but you got to do it. Okay. Now we get to step four. Now we're getting to some real meat of, of everything I'm talking about. And step four is you time before everyone else time. Okay, it's really important. So now we're going to focus on that 15 minutes you added to your morning by setting your alarm earlier. This is your time for putting the real fuel in the tank for your day. This is something I've called it before the hour of power. Don't get a, don't get worried. You don't have to do an hour of power. But, and you can always work up to more time. But right now, 15 minutes of power is great. Okay, that's all, this is, this is what you're thinking of though. It's a very devoted time. It's devoted to yourself and your own growth. It, um, that's what it's about. How can I be most happy and productive? Not even productive in the world. How can I be happiest in the world? How can I find something deeper, deeper meaning, whatever that is. Rich, you know, Richard Branson calls his, this his me time every morning. He calls it transformational Uh, Anthony Robbins talks a lot about the hour of power. You know, he's a motivational guru. He says it's the foundation of success. Oprah Winfrey says it's what keeps her on track all day. The late Steve Jobs said it was when he would get his best ideas. This time, this is when the most productive people, they all count on this time, even though they're not doing anything related to their work. It is the, the setup for doing the work for having a clear mind, for uh, being in that really good place. So that that's really what I want you to get about this. Okay, so I'd like you to start instituting 15 minutes of power every weekday morning. So Monday through Friday for now, okay? That's it. And again, so having this time signals, you know, the universe, you know, yourself, your family, that you're the first priority and everything else goes around that because you need to be the first priority. priority. This is a time to just work on yourself. It's a time to read, watch, listen, whatever, to anything that helps you be the best person you can be. 
it's a time for anything motivating, inspiring. It can be educational, but it needs to still be not educational like um, I'm going to be a better programmer at work. It's not that kind of education. It shouldn't have anything to do with your job or how to be a better mom or, you know, dad or how to be a better dad or anything like that. This is about you. So it's a time to meditate, you know, to pray, whatever else fits for you. It's, it's just, it's not a time to work on your bills, answer emails, check your phone, uh, you know, see who called last night or if there's any text from your mom. Nope. She, your mom can wait 15 minutes. You're okay. It's not a time to watch a funny cat video on YouTube. I know those are great and that could be good, but this isn't that time. So what I'd like you to do is in the, and remember I told you you can get nitty gritty. So here we go. In the evenings, I want you to decide the night before what you're going to do the next day. You don't want to get up, have this 15 minutes and then sit there looking around for something to do. That's not going to help you. So instead, I, the night before, just decide what you're going to do. And I'm going to highly recommend a place to start. Are you ready? Okay. I'm going to tell you how I started and this is it. And this is what I have my clients start with. If you don't have a meditation practice already, I want you to start with two minutes of meditation. I want you to start this 15 minutes with two minutes of meditation. I have my free meditation starter kit to help you get started. Yes, I do. So come download that. But And that it's based on two minutes. So it's the perfect thing to get started. Um, you can always get my program, 15, you know, meditate in 15 minutes, 15 days if you want. But start with the free thing if you're not sure. Just, just go free. It's totally fine. Two minutes. Two minutes, I don't want you to do more. Even if you think you can, don't do more. Just two minutes, just have two minutes. After that, I want you to spend time writing for 10 minutes, okay? And here, here are two prompts I want you to use, okay? I want you to use these two prompts, either of these, one or both, but just one of these. The first one is to finish this sentence. Wouldn't it be nice if, that's it. I want you to write for 10 minutes, wouldn't it be nice if, wouldn't it be nice if my husband and I um, always got along? Wouldn't it be nice if we were laughing like we did when we were dating? Wouldn't it be nice if we had sex every day again? Wouldn't it be nice if all the bills were paid and it was and money came easily into my life? Wouldn't it be nice if uh, we flew first class everywhere? Wouldn't it be nice, see how this sounds? See, when you're answering, wouldn't it be nice if, guess where your brain goes, I know, into all the good stuff into all the things that I were, were trying to program in and into a positive direction. Another option, if you don't like, wouldn't it be nice if, is to write down three things you want. And I want you to be very specific, three things you want. And then after you write down what you want, I want you to write down why you want that thing under each thing. And so in, in 10 minutes, you might just do one of those things each day, you know, and then you can spread that out over three days. So, you know, I want to have a, a happy relationship with my partner. Great. Why? Why do you want a happy? And I know you're sitting there right now going, well, of course, I'll be everybody does. But why? You want it because you think it's going to make you happy. You want it because you think something else about it. But again, you can have those happy feelings now. You don't have to rely on your partner or flying first class everywhere or paying all your bills. You can feel good now. So what I want you to do, and again, be very specific about what you want. Get real specific. It's beautiful. But write down the why of why you want it and and that's where your imagination can take over and you can be in that why. The why feels really good because you're starting to feel the feelings. Because anything you want in the world is because of how you think it'll make you feel. So as you write about it and you write about the why, you're, in, you're encouraging and you're feeling all those feelings, which feels amazing. And again, will point you in the right direction for the day. <laughs> I know. And I'm going to say this. I've never been a journaler. I When people say, take out your journals, I'm like, oh, you know, I'm throwing up in my mouth a little. But I really want you to try this. Take 10 minutes to do some introspective writing and it will absolutely positively charge your day, you know, put a positive charge to the day. Just try it out. You can, I would prefer you did it like in a notebook and write it out longhand. But if you feel like you need to type, that's fine too. Just try it. I, I I know I fought it for a long time and now I don't fight it because it does feel good. And lastly, of course, you can make just a list of things you appreciate or you're grateful for. That's always a great way to start your day and, you know, putting things in there for what you appreciate or are grateful for. 
it's a great 10 minutes. Easy peasy. There's your, you know, 15 minutes because I know it's going to take you a couple minutes to get settled in each thing. Um, and then if there's any time left of your 15 minutes, because again, you have your old school kitchen timer, I'm showing you on YouTube right now and on the video, and you're setting it for that 15 minutes or that 10 minutes or the extra five, whatever it is. If there's any time left, I'd like for you to just sit quietly and see what comes up for you. See if there's anything else you're thinking. See what comes into your head. Um, there's lots of different ways in the future that you can change this. I write to my spirit guide some days and I, uh, I pray, I meditate. I, I do all kinds of things during my hour of power in the morning. Right now I'm at 45 minutes of power. <laughs> Mine has changed ma many times over the years. I've had 15 minutes, 10 minutes. I've had an hour. Um, I don't think I have done an hour in a long time though. No, that's not true. I do an hour sometimes, but it's whatever's going to work in your schedule. But what happens is you get really hooked on it and the more you, it starts to feel really good and you want to do more and more so that it'll, it'll naturally get longer. And again, so, and I'm going to say this too, if you just can't bring yourself to write, I really want you to try it, but let's say you're like, no, Abby, I'm just, not, you can't control me. I'm just not doing it. <laughs> then I'd like you to get one book, not 50 books, not 20 books, one book that you've been wanting to read in the self-help or thought arena, okay? One book, and I do read every morning a book for 10 minutes. That's part of my hour of power. I read some book for 10 minutes. And these are all books, you know, that I end up talking about on the podcast. <laughs> um, because these books, I love to learn. It's really fun for me. And again, I'm not learning, uh, like uh, there are things that for me at this point, I can just listen, read for 10 minutes and it, it's not, uh, it feels uplifting, right? That, that's the thing. So 10 minutes, any book. Uh, might I highly recommend my Amazon number one bestseller, Be Happily Married, even if your partner won't do a thing. <laughs> you can do that, right? You could get that. Uh, you could also, I don't, you know, I have a relationship goal setting workbook on the website. Download that, do that for 10 minutes, you know, every morning, you know, there's, or if there's some other course you've been trying to take again, that's for your better, best good, not a course to get better at, you know, Python when you're a programmer is Python something Anaconda. What are those called? <laughs> I don't know what the programming you're laughing at me right now. Programmers write in, tell me what they're called. Is it Anaconda? Is it Python? I don't know. But there's something like that, you know, don't, that's not how I want this time used or how to be a better programmer or how to live in the world of programmers. I, I want you to instead do something that's, you know, different. <laughs> um, when, when you've been doing it for 20 years like I have, I'll let you maybe read a, a different kind of book in the morning, but for now, please stick to this kind of stuff. Okay. So I'd like you, let me, I'm, I want to say this well. I, I just want you to think overall that this 15 minutes of time is f for your greater good, okay? And then I'd like you to do one more thing for your greater good, okay, in the morning somewhere. So this could be like doing a special scrub in the shower each day. This could be working out. This could be stretching for two minutes or one stretch. This could be med meditating outside of your 15 minutes of power, right? So uh, this could be doing a yoga pose or two. This could be sitting quietly in your favorite chair with a cup of tea. This could be having sex with your partner. Go back in the bedroom. This could be eating something healthy, taking vitamins or supplements. You know, I, over time, again, I'd like you to stretch this 15 minutes into a longer period that includes some kind of movement and 15 minutes of meditation. But to get started, I want you to start with a consistent practice. That's the most important thing. And so we want to go for the low-hanging fruit. So 15 minutes. So just focus on it. Don't rush it. Find a rhythm that works for you. I, people ask me a lot, so I'll just, you know, say it in here. Uh, I do have in the mornings um, uh, a really, like a, a time that's just uh, for also working out. Okay, let me say, I'm, well, I'm just stuttering, aren't I? I'm sorry. And that was my step five, by the way, to add something that's for you. Sorry, that was my step five. I don't think I said that well. That's okay. We make mistakes and we keep going. I got excited. 
So what I do is I get up, I do my little intention, I bring myself, you know, to something positive, I do my little intention. And then for me, I work out first thing, Monday through Friday, because I don't like working out and that's the first thing I do. I have my gym clothes laid out the night before, I go directly over, I do my workout, and then, uh, you know, I drink my water, I have a, a, for me, every morning I start the day with warm water with lemon and Celtic salt. That's how I start the day. It's really good for revving up your system. It's better than coffee. It um, really gets yourself going. I know a lot of people, I don't drink coffee. So, um, but you know, it's fine if you have a cup of coffee. A lot of times people do that to help their workout, whatever works for you. Um, but that's what I do. And then, so I come home and I usually have even another cup of that before, you know, once I'm back and I shower. Usually it's after I shower actually. And so I'm trying to hydrate again and get all my electrolytes balanced and that little bit of Celtic salt, little pinch of salt, you know, really helps all that happen. Um, and I love just the warm lemon water feels good. And I do it warm, not hot. And then after I work out and I shower, so then I shower, I get myself fully ready. I mean, makeup, clothes, all of it. I am ready to go. And then I meditate and I do that first and I do 15 minutes of meditation. And then I do this other time. I do 10 minutes of reading a book. I do um, journaling. Sometimes I'm listening. I'm, you know, doing some, uh, you know, aim, uh, contacting your spirit guide meditation lately. I've been doing that, which I do separate than my regular meditation because I meditate in silence. Um, sometimes I'll do some like chakra rebalancing, uh, that kind of work where I'm really focusing on my chakras. I'm doing maybe more of a visualization thing versus meditation because those are a little different. Although if you want to start with visualization, I'm fine with it, you know, in your 15 minutes. And so that's sort of how my more, and then I'm ready to like have breakfast or do all the next things that I do. I don't always have breakfast, you know, it depends on my day, but anyway. And then I come to work and do the rest so that when I get to work, I'm really ready to go. Sometimes when I first get to work, I will say I will do a short meditation just to kind of get myself centered here at work and get myself ready. Sometimes lately I've been playing with doing um, my meditation and my journaling and stuff here at my office. It just depends. And that might depend for you. Who's in the house? Who's up? Where is it easiest for you to do? I have one uh, client. Um, it's really working for him. He leaves his very busy house, he goes to, drives to work to make sure he's not going to be late, and then he sits in the car and meditates for 15 minutes before he goes into work. That's great. Some, it's very nice to try to do all this together, but not everybody can. But what I want you to do is find something that works and stick to it. It shouldn't change every day because of everybody's schedule. That's my issue. It's when people tell me I didn't have time. You always have time. You wake up early. Uh, the only time I don't do that do all of this is if I have, first thing, if I have a flight that's early in the morning and I have to, I don't, I get up at 420 in the morning, people know, Monday through Friday, because it's funny and I'm in recovery and it's funny, 420. Um, if I have to get up earlier than four, I do get up at four, but I won't get up earlier. So to work out or to do anything, I just won't. It's not, it doesn't feel good to me. I, I don't feel like I have a good day. I feel shaky all day. It's not, for me, it doesn't work. So for me, occasionally, if I have an early flight or I have something else that's happened, where I, I then I'm moving these items later in the day somewhere. I don't always work out when that happens. Um, I might, if I'm in the airport, I'll walk all, you know, the whole time I'm in the airport or something. Um, but I always find a time uh, when I meditate. And it's easy on a plane. You just put, you close your eyes, you put your headphones in. No one knows what you're doing. Uh, or, because I actually find it easier to meditate on the plane than when I'm in the, you know, terminal. Um, but again, I'm not on a plane every single day. So this isn't the common thing, right? That, the, if you're a child, you know, you have a three-year-old at home and they're waking up in the middle of the night or a baby or whatever, I get it. You know, the schedule is hard to keep exact. So I'm not saying to keep it exact, but I am saying don't always forego and think, I just need 10 more minutes of sleep. I need this five minutes of sleep. You don't. You'll do better with 15 minutes of this than 15 minutes of sleep. I know that doesn't feel good to hear and I know you probably don't want to hear it because you just want to sleep and I get it, I remember, but that level of sleep deprivation, 15 minutes isn't going to fix it 
And 15 minutes of this will help your emotional regulation and will help you think better for the day. So that's really your better bet of those two things at that point. (sighs) Hopefully that all makes sense. I don't ever say any of this to judge you or the life you have, or I don't want anyone, no one should judge you. You're doing the best you can with the tools you have. I get it. I am, as always, calling you to a higher space. I want you to really be happy. I want you to find that secret sauce for your life so bad because I know how good it feels on the other side. And so that's always what I'm talking about in these. That's the only reason I would take you through a step-by-step like this because I want you to see things that work not just for me but for my clients and for other people and to try what you can do. Maybe you're going to wake up five minutes early for a while. Whatever you can do. Maybe you're just never going to hit the snooze anymore. And that's your, you know, start with where you can start. Start with what you can. Don't just throw the baby out of the bathwater and think, well, I can't do it all, so I'm not doing any of it. That is never my intent and is not what I'm saying. So, and again, don't feel like, don't judge yourself with it. Do your best, but really do your best. Don't cop out on yourself Don't give up on yourself. And even if it's hard and even if you have to keep trying, just don't give up. You'll figure out a way. Keep kind of, you know, moving around until you find, again, that secret sauce for you. I've had to work on this for so many years till I figured out what worked for me. And, And it is always changing and evolving and I'm okay with that. You know, I just know that this period of time is really so important to have, to be productive, to be happy, to be calm, to really be in charge of my days, this is really what works. So that's it for this week. Thank you, thank you for spending time with me. I love you. Oh, I just love you so much. I'm so grateful for our time together. I feel so good. I'm appreciating so much right now. Thank you for asking about all this so I could share all this with you. I, as always, want it to be really helpful. As always, please come download your free meditation starter kit or the mindfulness kit. But today I'm really talking about the meditation starter kit. Please really be good to yourself this week. Give yourself some grace while also holding yourself accountable. Your word means something. When you make a promise to yourself, keep it or don't make the promise. Really do your best to start listening to your internal dialogue and making promises you can keep. And, you know, work hard for them because you're worth it. You're so, so worth it. I swear. I promise. All right. I love you a lot. Have a wonderful week and I'll talk to you soon.